So good evening, everybody. It's uh, 636 p.m. Uh, zoning Board of the Peers meeting uh, in the town of Deerfield. It's in a hybrid fashion. Um, I'm not supposed to read this whole situation here, apparently. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Act of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Please note, while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast. Unless otherwise required by law, members of the public with a particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person Versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in person attendance, the town will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted below. Uh, right. So we're going to call the meeting to order and have a roll call of the members present. Uh, Dave Sharp. Okay. David Potter. Adam Sokolowski. Jennifer Remillard. Alex Hershenrider. Okay, so on the agenda, we have minutes to be approved for June and August. I will entertain a motion to approve those min minutes. So moved. I second. Okay, and we'll just make a notation that Alex is gonna, you're gonna add the Zoom links. Right, or recording links. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Alex Hershenrider, aye. You're supposed to say your name, so we oh, might get penalized for that. Oh, no, 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 no. It's because it's, it's a hybrid meeting, you have no, to actually. Yeah. Jennifer Remillard, aye. Okay, all right. Adam Sikolowski, aye. David Potter, aye. Dave Sharp, aye. Okay. All right, so new business public hearing uh, application filed by Jeff Brunisky for a special permit for the property located at 951 River Road, map nine, lot seven, for use as a contractor yard to store park vehicles, tools, supplies, other various items for business use, including equipment as provided by the zoning bylaw, chapter 179, 5, uh, Entertain a motion to open that public hearing. Um, so moved. Or do I have to say the whole motion? I no. second. No, I think we can abbreviate it. Make this fine. Okay, Mr. Berniski uh, notified us um, that he is going to be running late due to an emergency. Is anybody else here on the meeting for Mr. Berniski? Okay, so with that, we're going to just leave the public meeting open, the public hearing open, um, and we'll return to that uh, when Mr. Grinisky is present. So now, uh, in our mail, the last couple times there's been or been notices by uh, adjoining the uh, towns of special permits. Uh, so. There is in the state zoning laws a requirement to notify in some instances changes of use to property. So they've been sending it to us, but I guess they've been sending it to other people too. I don't know as if we're the people that should be getting it, but they're kind of get they're kind of over sending it out I think there is an issue when community this community changed zoning and they didn't notify the abutting communities uh, and the attorney general's office flagged that as a change so in some of those instances though I have identified that the town of Deerfield wasn't a butter by just pulling up the 
parcel. And one of those that got sent to us was, and it was in last month's mail was, uh, I said, well, I brought it to the attention of staff. I said, well, the water district is the water, not us, not the town. Mm -hmm. So, and I said, you know, we're not in a position to represent the town on the zoning. You know, if the town owns property, then it should be select board's office if there's an issue. So that's why we're getting those. I don't know if we're going to continue to get those, but. So it's not just that it's a budding South Deerfield property. It's just. just well, in some budding. instances. It is, but otherwise it it's just random because we're the next town over they're sending. Well, right. And then the, like some it. towns go a little bit further on their butters lists. You know, we do too. It doesn't necessarily be a direct abutter. Right. But, and then you could also consider, well, if the town owns the road. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, on the property boundary. Like that greenfield solar bot is, you know, is within enough proximity that, yeah. well, I have nowhere in our purview do I see that we should be representing the town yeah. at a zoning hearing. I hear you. Yeah. In any other community. But the, the town may have interest in the select board's office should yeah. handle that. Yeah. Oh, I should have got one off. Yeah. Um, Anything else? What about the second permit application? So the second permit application, because it was publicly posted in the newspaper, it started at seven. We can't start it before seven. We can take a recess for 10 minutes. And Just, sorry, not to be. Go ahead. Anyhow, but did you do both um, uh, minutes at once? Yeah. You did the motion? Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll take a 10 minute recess. Um, actually, I have a quick question. Um, okay. Alex and I had started a long time ago working on different revisions. Um, oh, yes. Was there any changes or did we want to continue with those at some point? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's definitely a good idea to clean up some of that stuff, but with staff turnover. Yeah, I know it's been hard. Uh, you know, and the other load, but I mean, I think it's something to Keep in mind, I mean, if they, you know, we have uh, Amy, you know, if she, something she wants to start to take on, or if the assistant town administrator job is filled and the new person gets settled in there, I think whatever we can do to make it easier for the applicants, maybe not necessarily easier, but more efficient. Yeah, I think it was more like we were looking at streamlining it to make it make right. sure all the questions were answered that we had every time they came up because they weren't always being answered within the- um, No, and it's all so. public record. So if you have a good applicant that had everything, you know, filled out and, you know, had a good explanation of everything then you should say, okay, well, here's a, this is what the last person did. You know, and this was what we thought was, a, you know, an A plus job, take this so you can refer to it. I mean, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. No, no. You know, and a lot of people, you know, don't necessarily want to have to have the ability to get represented by council, but some of those are very good, you know, and they're part of an application that's a public document to say, hey, you know, take a look at this. It's pretty good. So. Ten minutes. See. Yeah, it's six forty-five. Mr. Brennan, you can make it in, and then if not, and. We'll start the next hearing right at seven. Does anybody want to review this file? Either of these files while we're at recess? Sure, I'll take a look. Uh, do you, can you click the uh, some more file than you used to? See, that's the full file. Yeah. Decision on the last one we did it, and I don't remember where. I'll stop here. Folks, do you want. It's, we're in recess. Yeah, and I totally forgot to get you here for the minutes. Adam, do you want. Um, I don't want to jail. A signed one. Any mistakes? Okay. Yeah.
unsized phone. Yep, the railroad guy yeah, road one. Yeah, that's right over there. That's the one you don't want. You want to move the one that we have here. Yeah. 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 What's that? When is that? Oh, triads. Oh, I will be in. No, I won't. I'll be in uh, co response training with the uh, at UMass uh, with the, the uh, not psychologists. But yeah, I'm, I have to go to that for a week. Yeah, I wish it could, and then sit down in three days. But it's, you know, you know, they do hour and a half for lunch. I'd rather bring my lunchbox and get. Some. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. With the other people that did it, you know, it's like it's a forty-hour class, but you get you get through it in three days. You know. Thanks. Excuse me. Depends on when your hour and a half lunch is. You have to come back for that. They said I might come back. That's what Jay said. That was 16. Yeah, I guess the week after, because that's only four weeks. That's not like a month. Well, it's, I got my calendar. This is some of the special times. Okay. All right, we stay reference in here. Yes. In the application, or at least in the letter. Is that also part of the application? But you should, you should focus on it to get your friends. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday, yeah. Well, obviously, a lot of people have been using it for a couple hundred years, not 800 years, a couple of hundred years. I haven't used it that long, but I was about 16 years old. Yeah.
Mm-hmm. And tuck it in. Got like to a wedding that you're trying to get out of. <laughs> no, I made it to that one. That's in Philadelphia. It's one of my wife's cousins. Nice. Oh, that's a good trip. Wow. Well, Maybe you could get the head back from. I, I went to uh, I went to one down there last year. She's got a whole pack of cousins down there. They're in Collingswood, New Jersey, is where they live. But Philadelphia is like the closest city. And uh, so we, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw the surprise you got me. This is going to be pretty windy tonight. Another email from the power company.
All right, Alex, you want to get this thing going again? We got one minute up. That's good. I'll start reading the notes, then it will turn seven o'clock. David Teft? Yes, sir. You want to come up to the table here? Sure. Yep. All right. Yep. So we're back in session here. Public hearing application filed by David Teff for a special permit for property located at 6 Railroad Yard Road, map 7, lot 3, for use as a contract yard to park and maintain trucks and store associated tool supply and equipment in a C2 district as provided by the zoning bylaw 179-2300. Okay. Mr. Tapp. Yes, sir. Um, so I have a small trucking company. Um, we've been operating for about two years now. And um, we haul aggregate asphalt. Um, true stone in Deerfield drives a fair amount of my business. Um, and uh, selfishly, I grew up in the Southern Vermont area. And um, eventually we're looking to move north. And so currently my business is based 90% of it uh, underneath Massachusetts, or excuse me, under Vermont and Massachusetts, roughly in a Route 2 corridor up into Vermont and New Hampshire. And so. Okay. Uh, what are you looking uh, to do with like, the scope of uh, your business there? Um, I mean, it's, are you going to, you're just going to be using a parking lot on the south side or southeast side or the parking area? Or are you going to make any improvements to the property? Uh, I am not the landlord. We'll be looking at making improvements. Um, we will be on the southerly side. There's a building that's roughly, I'd say, 30 by 60 is my guess. And uh, we'll be operating out of that building and then parking uh, my equipment there. And so as if you're standing in the road on rail yard road, um, it would be all the way to the left at that address six rail yard road. Uh, it's the old grain. I believe they had grain there. Yeah, it's the only one standing there if you go down rail yard before you get to the do not enter sign. I'll just share my screen. Hey, there you go. Yeah. I thought that building belonged to somebody else. Well, he's going to be uh, leasing. No, no, not to the railroad. I thought it belonged to the National National But it doesn't belong to the railroad. Who owns the building? Uh, Philip Nash. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, where, where? Potential conflict of interest. I don't want to stay out of it. Okay. okay. All right. The, the application right. actually says it's owned by an LLC. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the uh, you know members of the LLC, but it doesn't look like it's owned individually by the person. Potentially. I think. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but we still think that uh, we could not be involved. Okay. okay. All right. Back to the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to stay. No. All right. Well, thanks for your. For your effort here, Bob. <laughs> yes. Anyway. <clears throat> All right. Well, now you know. All right. I'm going to get out of here. We get three points for them. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, hi, Mr. Taft. Hello. I do have a question for you. In the email response that you gave to Amy, um, you indicated that you would be keeping um, the trucks um, will be inside and kept warm. Um, is that just through heat that's from the building, or do you plan on idling the vehicles for a certain no. duration of time before no. they're sent out? No, at $5 a gallon, I can't afford to idle. <laughs> um, that's, uh, you know, also... You know, that's one of my reasons uh, for moving closer to 
uh, in the deer field near true is that uh, my truck runs probably about 60 miles a day without producing any revenue. So um, it, it would save me a fair amount of money. So internally, you know, during the winter, um, uh, from past experience working on equipment in the winter, I ache. <laughs> so a warm building is uh, very welcome and attractive to me. What's your fleet size that's going to be there? Uh, right now, I got four, mm -hmm. four trucks. Yep. Yeah. You said aggregate. Yes. Yep. Yep. One hundred percent is aggregate right now. Um, in, in your email, you also indicated that um, you're not going to really be leaving any materials on site. They'll just be preloaded and not put on the ground. So it's basically just transportation um, of the materials that you carry back and yeah. forth from job site to job site. Yep, exactly. You know, there's, um, um, again, you know, uh, True Stone and Delta, those are the areas that, you know, are going to house, obviously, house the materials. So it's a, you know, quick jump for me to grab grab something and then head to a, a job site with it. So there'll be, uh, unless I have a breakdown of material in the back, I'll never, never have, you know, a bulk lot of material there. It just doesn't make sense for me. Thank you. You're Any welcome. on-state fuel storage? No, no. I would just, um, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. I would just say that uh, if I would just condition the permit if the board wanted to that um, he provides his contact information to the board if anything changed, the, you know, based when we do the, the permit stays with him and doesn't go with the property. Um, if the if in the event he changes his business to moving any type of tank or hazardous materials that he works with the fire department to make sure that that's out there, uh, that it's clearly posted, um, you know, at the entrance to the lot, um, you know, if that should change. Um, so that would, it would be conditioned. So if he does change it to that, or if the board members want him to come back, if he starts moving anything that's placarded, that's up to the discretion of the board. That's my only thought. Um, on, on safety up there is, um, you know, obviously if you're moving rock and sand, they're uh, very safe. Um, sometimes things change, you know, mm -hmm. even their liquid asphalt is very safe. It's just hot and burns people and it spills, but it doesn't, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's not explosive, but yeah. That sounds fine to me. I, I, you know, I'm just sort of looking at our criteria here, and, and it, it, it seems like an industrial area, right? It's already, and so as far as neighborhood character, you know, social economic impact, utilities and public services, you, you have what you need there. Yeah, I mean, the other thing, you know, if we wanted to think about the rest of River Road, we condition and special permit to the, every, the, the exit and they go, you know, out to five and 10 closest way they don't take the entire length of river road south um which you know there is a I mean, that's just an idea i don't know if it's really too enforceable but i mean i guess if you got complaints but you know the best access would be you know, take river road to five and ten on by cheapside bridge not mm -hmm. all the way to sunderland mm -hmm. yeah because uh, the bottom part of river road is still being reconstructed and having all that other damage done before so yeah. things like that can enforce that yeah i think you can, if you can special con you can put a special con you know condition on the permit i, I mean it, it is quicker and smoother to go that way too i mean oh, which way out to five and ten straight out to yeah. the cheap side not to go mm -hmm. you know if you were going south to take mm -hmm. river road all the way south to 116 but i mean it's also a four truck operation here not a for <laughs> right. I mean, we could also limit, you know, the size to 10 trailer trucks or, you know, that seems fair. He's got four now. It gives him some time to expand. I think something's at eight trucks in the application now. What size are the trucks? Um, I have two dump trucks. 
a one tractor and then a, a smaller service truck. And are there parameters that are you know, built into this as far as like how big it can run? You can put any size truck on there you want. It's a, it's a big truck. I, I understand. Yeah, that's oh, an application. Class eight, sorry. Class yeah. eight truck. Yeah, it's a size. That's yeah. a size. Full size, size. size yep. truck. Yep. Sorry, it's not eight. Well, that's right. Like not a problem. Role would be that size something. Yeah, no, I'm just wondering if his business changes, right? Right. If, right. if he starts putting, you know, eighteen wheelers there. Right. So he's. Is that? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, we want to make sure that he has that ability because that's yeah. part of his business now. Yeah, I've got one tractor, which will in the future be pulling a trailer. Yes. Yep. I'm sorry, I should have specified better for you. Yes. Um, yeah, but I, as I recall, was there was somebody else that was before this board, maybe who's coming back? Is that the person who's coming back? Yeah. It's in the same neighborhood? Same neighborhood, yep. The other application is so the same neighborhood. Just the yep. idea of traffic flowing, industrial, you know, commercial traffic, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, True Stone with their blacktop plant will put out a truck sometimes as quick as every 90 seconds out of the blacktop plant up there. And, you know, with their asphalt terminal, sometimes they're filling trailer trucks like starting at two o'clock in the morning every 10 minutes. Okay, and that's in the in the rail yard. No, that's just a little bit closer. It's it's the asphalt terminal uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, at well, it's all state asphalt liquid asphalt terminal. Okay, they do both ways. They bring asphalt in by rail car, and then they also you know do stuff as new as um, they're doing a pilot project now with straws where they're taking shredded straws and they mix things into the liquid asphalt that then get sold to other places that make blacktop with the liquid, liquid asphalt, but they also use a lot of it to make their own blacktop. So, but they're in the Northeast region, they- So there's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of tra traffic and, and, in and out of there. Are we just, you know, able right now to limit potentially his traffic, his four trucks or- Right, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's road. just, it's a thought. I mean, I think right. that if someone has the type of business like this gentleman has, the right place for him is that the good place for that type of business is in the rail yard. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, close to it, not in the you know, but if you saw yeah. on the map. Typically, though, you find that people are coming in and out off of five and ten. I would say ninety-five to ninety-nine percent of the trucks that go in and out of right because they're not coming from River Road. Right. Whereas you have this sweet no. spot, but no, you know. So I, I, I then I, I'm <coughs> more in line with saying, yeah, if we could just say limiting what we the five and ten. Right. That seems like a good thing for our neighborhood. And not cramping the style too much. I mean, you still, like everybody else, is pretty much coming out the five and 10 road south. Yeah. It would seem a little bit unfair to limit this person with half a dozen trucks if there's no limit on um, the other folks who are, have much bigger operations. I guess that's all I would say. Just, I'm not saying we have to. No, no, I'm no. like it's, I just I'm saying like you know, just based on our baseline conditions that we normally want as far as the, yeah. you know, that they keep their contact information up to date with the town hall. Yeah. You know that if the business changes, that they have to come yeah. back to us. Yeah. yeah, and my name's on the door when I drive out of that yard every morning. Yeah. So uh, there's no way that I want to create any hard feelings uh, with anybody that we within that area. Um, and you know, ninety percent of the time, we do go right. And I'd say ninety nine point nine percent of the time, the trucks are restricted. You know, based off of the, the business owners there, that they tell their drivers that you know River Road is off limits. It's small too. You know, it's yeah. small. It's narrow. You know, um, those dumps. They're you know seventy seven thousand pounds rolling down through there. So. You know, there's not a lot of room. And so for safety purposes and other reasons, it's, it's, um, I, I don't say it doesn't happen, but it's, I would say it's very, 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 very rare. So.
Oh, okay. So we would make a motion to approve the application as presented with a maximum number of vehicles of 10 or is 10 sufficient for you? Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Uh, we would say that the permit would stay with the, with the applicant and it would not go with the property. Mm -hmm. um, and that um, if the business changes to tanked or hazardous plot carded trucking, that they need to be in regulation with the state fire marshal and with the fire department and that that needs to be posted at the entrance to the parking lot if the vehicles are unattended yeah. and um, you know proper security should be should be made to that and they need to currently be in contact with their fire department to return all their materials once they're in the no so they're fine now they're just, just basically later. aggregate okay. mm -hmm. so Can I second that for discussion? Yes, someone can absolutely do that. All right, not that, I'm not ready yet, but, um, <laughs> okay. So I didn't catch all of the fire marshal stuff, um, but would the condition, the applicant show obtain all necessary permits, licenses, and other approvals from any board commission official or other or agent of the town of Deerfield, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and or federal government cover that? Or does it need to be more? Yeah, no, I think that's good. We just want to make sure that, you know, sometimes it's good to have that in our enforcement too, where, you know, the building inspector can enforce it if there's an issue then the permit, you know, if they're operating outside of their permit, then they can, you know, the building inspector has the authority to shut them down and say, whether it's this or anybody that, you know, they're not complying with the permit, with our special permit. Would, would that address the concerns about the flammable materials or do you, would you like to see it? Well, exactly? I would like to say exactly on ours because you know, if they're plaque card and everything, then that's, I, I would say that, you know, if the business model changes to hazardous materials, plaque carded trailers or trucks, that they have to come back to us. Because of, you know, really their proximity to the rail yard, which the rail yard is their own separate animal because we have no control over what they do. And just when you start, you know, mixing hazardous materials and stuff like that around we want to make sure but I, I don't it doesn't look like you have any idea any idea to go that way but no that's, a, that's a whole nother animal i'm not ready to tackle just want to make sure that we're, future. <laughs> that we're covered down the road yeah, no, that's, okay. that's all yeah no, I'm, I'm in support of it. i just i just wasn't uh, sure if i could my intentions is to do business in this area for you know years to come and so you know i'm here to do it right yeah and you know, so this probably won't be the first and last time you see me. Where are you based out of now? Southampton, Massachusetts. But um, you know, I got equipment from from there um, all the way up into uh, Vermont. So I, I play musical trucks quite often. Yeah. So. Okay. Any other discussion? And you want to put in the finding of fact that it it meets our. About the board is is correct me if I'm wrong, but the board is overall support of the special permit presented and the benefits outweigh the detriments pursuant to the purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw. Yeah, that works for me. Building inspector, you got anything I see on there? You good with this? No, I'm good with it. It's a perfect location for it. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah, you. No, I, we can ask. Uh, we 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 got to close the public hearing actually before we can vote on it. But um, no one else that's on has anything. All right. This, we got just an observer here, I guess. So Amy says no. No one else has got anything. All right, so before we approve it, we got to close the hearing. So I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. 
I second. Okay, we'll do a roll call on that. Aye, Dave Sharp. Aye, Adam Sikowski. Aye, Jennifer Rumelard. Aye, Adam Surgeon Runner. All right. So now that we've discussed those conditions, I think we'll entertain, um, you know, if you read it back out, Alex, whoever made that motion, now that the public hearing is closed, then we can vote on it. So we're procedurally correct. Um, I may have to work on the uh, flammable or hazardous materials condition, but I'll do that. Recording, but um, you want me to make the motion? Yes, or someone can. But uh, if you're okay. good at reporting where you can read it. Yep. Uh, so I will make a motion to approve the special permit for six rail yard road map seven lot three with the following conditions and authorize the chairman to sign. Yep. Uh, and those conditions are the app blah, the special permit shall remain with the applicant. The applicant shall provide contact information to be on file with the town for emergency purposes. Um, the applicant shall obtain all necessary permits, licenses, and other approval from any board, commission, official, or other agency or agent of the town of Deerfield, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and or the federal government. The maximum number of vehicles to be on the property is to be limited to 10. And um, this, the wording may change a little bit, but uh, if the business model changes to include hauling blacktop asphalt or hazardous materials no i would just be ha hazardous materials blacktop's not a hazardous material okay. It'd be like liquid hazardous material something yeah. okay uh hazardous uh if the business model changes to include hazardous materials hauling hauling hazardous materials the application I need to haul, haul, if they're on, on site because okay. if his tractor goes to another place and picks up a tank of gas and that's not on his site and they don't need to come back. But if they're gonna have hazardous materials on site, then I want them to come back. Uh, if the business model changes to include hazardous materials on site, the applicant shall come back before the board. Second. Perfect. Okay. We'll call a vote or any other discussion. Uh -huh. Yep. yep. David Sharp, aye. Adam um, Sikowski, aye. Jennifer Remillard, aye. <clears throat> Alex Hershenreiter, aye. Perfect. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate your time. Yeah. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll, I'll take, entertain a motion to reopen the public hearing from 6.30. So moved. Okay. Second. All right. Everybody's in favor of that? Re reopen that? Aye, Dave Sharp. Aye, Dave Sharp. Or continue it. It's a continuous <clears throat> sign, reopening. Yeah. I forgot my Roberts rules. I don't know if we need to take them. It's I okay. don't think so. No, I think we're okay. Because we all right, we so we have an application filed by Jeff Bernischke for a special permit for the property located at 951 River Road, Map Nine, Lot Seven, for use as a contract yard to store park vehicles, tool supplies, or other various items for business use, including equipment as provided by the zoning bylaw 1795300. All right, Jeff, if you could give us an overview of what you're looking to do over there? All I'm looking to do there really is have a place to keep my vehicles, my employees' vehicles, uh, miscellaneous tools, um, equipment, trailers. Um, and from time to time, uh, I, there will be dumpsters with different metals in it to be recycled. Um, there might be, there could be rarely, but there could be a time where there's a dumpster that has several tires in them waiting to go be recycled and also free on units. I you generally like to collect, you know, several and then bring them at once rather than go every day. 
Um, it's just a trying to save some fuel and time and labor and whatnot. Um, besides that, it's very rarely will anything but maintenance be done in, on that property. Okay. Does anybody from the public or on Zoom have anything for the public hearing? Board members? I guess I'm just curious about where where the Freon stuff is coming from. We like, uh, do you, you like collect dispose? Or? Well, part of well, for one area of the business that I have is dumpster rental. Uh, second area is excavation. The third area is estate uh, preparation, okay. clean out, um, and when in those cases, tires, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I try to not bring them every day because sometimes we get back to the yard after they're closed or whatnot. I mean, we do, we'd have no problem doing it, but it's just more cost efficient not to do it every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, that's the, where it comes from. Do you have to sort through dumpsters? Like no. You, you know. No. I think I missed the detail where the Freon comes from. The European just, just the tires? Easy. No, the Freon would come from people's properties. So one area of my business, um, for instance, somebody, oh yeah, a refrigerator, uh, air conditioner, stuff like that. They're, they're units, Freon units, I should say. Okay. Yeah. And so is it the refrigerator itself or is there it some could be. part of a fridge that contains that Freon? Yes, the compressor does, but the whole unit gets recycled. Got it. And they dispose of it properly. Okay. So you're collecting some of those appliances, essentially. Well, right? yes, so we, we dispose efficiency. of them yeah. properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're not, like if you rent, like if you rent someone a dumpster, it doesn't go, like you don't sort trash there no. or at all. No. Just the specialty things like tires, heavy metal and Freon is the only thing that you separate out or I don't, so they don't come from dumpsters, they come from property. So when we, for instance, someone passes away, family wants the house cleaned out, we bring a trailer that put the metal goes in, yeah. we bring um, a rubbish truck that the rubbish goes in to get dumped, and then we have a separate enclosed trailer where any of those items, mattresses, any of that stuff, they go in the enclosed trailer, and then that's where they get transferred back. If they can make it to the, to the um, uh, recycling facility, they will do them that day. Um, I mean, we get done pretty late, you know, a lot of times. So if we don't have the next day, something that applies to that, we'll wait until the next job comes out and we'll already have them in the trailer ready to go. That's just really what. So you'll end up with, with a pretty full trailer. Uh, oh, the trailer's full every time, but it's not of, of those. If, if we have to take them out, they go into a dumpster or um, a bin. They're not on the ground and, right. or anything like that. But I want to be clear. I, I, the goal is to not have anything there. I, the only reason sure. I'm saying yeah, it is yeah, there yeah, yeah. sometimes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did everybody get the email uh, with the applicant's specifics on the for the uh, criteria? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. I know there was one that uh, Amy had a little bit of a the first one didn't come through, so we. I don't know, I just wanted to make sure everybody got that. Um, my only concern is uh, property in general up there. It's getting pretty littered with uh, vehicles, mm -hmm. not your, uh, your specific area, but um, I know the other applicant was here. He's in the audience, the property owner, Doug. Uh, so I'm just concerned if the board wants to approve this, uh, should we limit the total number of vehicles. I mean, how many vehicles do you think you need to operate your business, uh, Jeff? Is know? this uh, employees when they to total? Like how many, like if you got a fleet of six trucks and six employees or what, what do you think you need? Because it's getting a little bit unsightly up there and I, I didn't get my counter out, but- Oh, wait. I, oh, go if ahead. I I today so K Dog Auto 
has a 15 car limit from the select board's auto license. He's at seven. I, I did this this afternoon after I spoke to you. And then Ryan is at 17. But a, potentially that's 35 vehicles with Ryan's 20 plus K Dog's 15 on site as is before this comes into play. Just so you're all aware of the, that's where the numbers that are allowed would be 20 on Ryan, 15 for the auto sales. Okay. okay. You broke up by the end, but you actually counted them up and they're right at the levy limit today? Yeah, there's 17, but then Ryan has his plow truck and boat, so his own personal plow truck and boat. So I don't, I'm assuming that's in the 20 or is that not in the 20? I, I mean, I, I, I would look at it like it's in the 20. I pulled that special permit right out here and it, it, it it's, 20 total, including boats. So that's what. So Ryan is on his limit and K Dog is actually below his limit. But but it does look, but there is more than 20 vehicles there. Right. But it's all within the limits. I, I understand that, but I'm just trying to think about. No, no, I, I just want you to know. So when you get into this, right. I mean, that's where we're at. Right. Okay. That's That's my concern is, you know, Right. How big is the total parcel of property? Sorry, I was, I was going to say the same thing. Like, what, what's the, how many cars can, or well, there's, can you fit there? So there's a bunch of different lots. There's one property owner. And just because we've been through this before, I'll kind of summarize. Or maybe Alex can share his screen and we can kind of put it up there if you're not familiar with it. I think I'm looking at it too, yeah. Um, but so. One. That's one lot. Yeah, so, so the yellow section right here is what Mr. Berniski is, is asking for the special permit. And if you see like kind of where it kind of dents in a little bit, Alex, on the middle of that yellow line, it's kind of brushed in there. Like if <coughs> you can't really see back in there too much where, where Jeff's got his stuff, but uh, no, you're right there. Scroll, scroll down a little bit. So, oh, no, other way up. Up, up. There we go. Now move your cursor up. All right. So, there's a building there, right next to River Road. Mm -hmm. That hasn't come with us to a special permit because apparently it's not required. There's a gentleman there selling used car, cars, K Dog. And he has a permit from the selectmen, but. Around that orange line that goes out towards the road there to the cheap side side of it, the railroad bridge side of it, other way to the railroad bridge. If that's your eye, Alex. To the railroad bridge side of it, there's a bunch of vehicles in there, and then there's some more on the other side and some boats. And it seems like the number of vehicles is slowly growing on the property, and they're right up to their levy limit on what they can have there, on on that. So uh, see it where it says six on the left side of the screen to the railroad bridge there, Dave? Uh, under the blue dot? Right yeah, there? it yeah. says six. So yeah. that okay. six is uh, where Doug here, the property owner has his special permit that he just got from us. He had amend amended so he could have 20 total vehicles or boats. And that includes if they're registered or they're not registered or whatever, he's at a yeah. maximum of 20. Yeah, and he's right up to that. So, <clears throat> but this is a different parcel of property. Well, it's the right. same property owner, but it's a different pros possible property. So, we should just be cognizant that if you know if trees get trimmed or you know you know is it is it a place where we should ask the applicant or put a condition in on maybe some vegetation or some better screening or not i mean i'm up to boards the boards whatever the board really wants to do i mean there's a lot of business and activity on that 901 river road drive or not 901, uh, the, the true stone driveway where all the trucks come out constantly and you can see that on the other side but you know you can't really see their property what what they're doing back there would would blow your mind if you drove in there and looked at it, mm -hmm. but you can't see it from the road. Um, so, 
that was just a thought and that was just, you know, should we, you know, what does the applicant need to run his business? What is he looking for? How many vehicles does he need to have on site? And if he's gonna use that parcel, is he, you know, gonna have some fencing or keep his kind of stuff separate or not? What, what his thought was on that. So we know, you know, if his business continues to grow at what point should he come back to us or at what are we comfortable with letting it grow to 20 or 30 vehicles or not that's i think the question that we have you know that i have um it's never going to be all at once because if the if the um you know my i have a potential of six employees right cars there right but then they're taking six vehicles out of there right. so it's never going to be you know i uh, you know uh right but you have six employees today yes, so yep, what i'm saying yes. is you know if you're going to operate your business what what do you look you know what do you you know if we're going to restrict how many vehicles are going to be there what is going to be good for your you know five year ten year out plan or you know what i mean i i right now i have um you, with, with trailers is trailers a vehicle no okay so a, a vehicle would be like you know a vehicle okay, okay. I, I have six vehicles six of my company vehicles yeah. and six potential employees. Again, there, I understand you have to go by the, you know, the, the highest exposure. They're never, if the, the employees vehicles are there, the other ones are not, but I get it. That's the, so, I, I mean, I guess that's the best information I could. That I, mean, I, I, no, I was just gonna say, um, I think, Chairman Sokolowski is just saying, like, potentially, if you're going to grow your business mm -hmm. larger um, and you're at six now, like, so six and six, would that overlap maybe, you know, for a half hour while people get out of their vehicles? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, do you think your growth rate might be up to, you know, 15 vehicles, 20 vehicles? Well, I can tell in the next five years because we're trying to make this easier for you sure. because you, yep. you know, have that growth potential. Yep. We don't want to have to make you come in here every few years or whatever it is. Well, I can say if I had to answer the question right now, of course I can't. I mean, what I want is I have worked hard enough to to have what I have. I don't see why I would need any additional. I could see replacing them, but I don't know why I would need additional. I mean, that's the best answer that I can have for you. I don't. So you're you know you're basically saying that you know, you might get newer vehicles. Yes, but as you got newer vehicles, you would yes. retire your vehicles. I just, there's a certain point you just can't, you have no, no, to, you know I, what I mean? No, it's, and I understand that. I just, you know, the idea is on that property. Sure. You know, it's one of those things that I think we should condition because there's so many other vehicles already going on there mm -hmm. that we should put some type of limit. I think that um, just, just a limit of 10 or 12 seem like that would well, I'm certainly not trying to, you know, is there any possibility if you had to put one, you could put 15? I was just going to say, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I would say 15, and I would also, you know, encourage the applicant to work with the, the property owner to, you know, think about some screening of vegetation there, you know, in the future. There's a lot of, uh, well, I, I don't know if that, when was the last time you, you would have been over there, but there's a lot of cover. It, uh, granted, Where you are, I, yes. I, I took a look. I drove yeah. by, my wife and I and the dog took a ride and I drove by these both these spots and took a look. And uh, I could see, you you know, up in the back there, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of almost got a spot for like fence and, mm -hmm. you know, it's brushed, it's, you know, there's vegetation there. But the other stuff down closer to the road is a little bit more unsightly. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just, you know, that grows or something else happens. I just think that, you know, if we put a 15 vehicle limit. Sure. For, I mean, I, if that would be fantastic. We just don't want, you know, as much as it is industrial commercial up there, we also don't want it to turn into a junkyard. I don't either. You know? <laughs> yeah. But you can't have one. I mean, do we, do we want to say that we, you know, we want some screening? something that the condition well i would say maybe that the screening that is there could you know the, um you know i don't know how much if you train you know so i have a question are you are you talking about sort of dividing the properties with screening or are you talking about no, no from the public way okay i mean i think we're kind of i think 
maybe you know it's much my fault as it is anybody else's we maybe should have talked about some screening or some stuff with with the previous applicant you know but i think you know as long as he keeps the 20 vehicles and then you know the select board authorized the other person at 15 and you know it's just and i i'm fine with the way that parcel or just parcel is having 15 to include you say you know registered or unregistered you know maximum number of vehicles 15 in that that's vegetation screening at the entrance to that parcel stays you know intact i mean obviously you can do maintenance to it but. i uh you know i can easily rearrange things too so nobody sees anything based yeah. on how it is which i understand i i'm just saying so that nobody has a problem with it and, and causes a reason to you know um Adam, yeah Yeah, I, I understand that, you know, it's just, I hate having that many there, and I normally don't. Right, and I, I know, it seems like it's and slowly. It forces it's on payment, but hey, it's done now. Here it is. Right. And I've got someone that's been there for three weeks now, sitting there. Right. So, you know. <clears throat> no offense to the member of the audience, but, th but his mess, it sounds like, potentially, isn't really this applicant's problem. No, but he's saying From, the same problem. You're worried about it getting exponential. More, so, even you know, I think, you know, you always try to look back on what permits have we done in the past? What's worked well? What do we look at that maybe we should have done a little bit better? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I can tell you there's another app, there's another permit that we granted in the past couple of years. And I, you know, and I know Bob's working on it. And, yeah. you know, I brought it to his attention because he's our enforcement agent on a couple of things that. Yeah. you know need to be addressed and yeah. you know i think if we get ahead of it and we say all right well 15 is is the is the limit oh, and yeah, we no, want the applicant to yeah. do you know their best to maintain that you know visibility from the road mm -hmm. that's that's there and then you know it's one of those things where down the road or something happens then you know the town has a little bit of, of enforcement and yeah. You know, we try to keep all, you know. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Yep. It's, and it sounds, well, I was just going to say, it sounds like um, the applicant's willing and recognizes that there's a way to sort of hide most things from. from I hide from is such a bad word. It's, it just sounds <laughs> bad, but yeah, I can, but, I can arrange it. So it's not as more sight, uh, more yeah. on, more out, out of sight. Out than, of sight. Yeah. I mean, there's no nothing that that's easy yeah yeah and there's no buildings that we're talking about here it's just an open lot i just put stuff on. the only thing i have there is um i have three storage containers you know ship, shipping movable containers yeah. um that the tools go in and locked so yeah. there's well i mean you know any of these people that get contract slots they can come get a building permit as long as it's under ten thousand square feet right bob you know you, you can add a building yeah you you could add a building yes yeah Right. On both these ones that we've just did, you know, they could, you know, mm -hmm. they don't, people only have to come to us if it meets the criteria for size and use and stuff like that. Yeah, it's basically more on use where the, the auto dealer was by right because he had the little building. So that was just allowed. That's why that we didn't, we didn't have any way to get involved in that one. The zoning board didn't have a way to get involved in that one. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, it's, I think that's we're kind of all on the same page in that. So I'll, I would entertain unless, uh, so would the applicant be okay with a limit of 15 vehicles registered or unregistered? Yes. Um, and, you know, maintaining the vegetation that's up there now on that, you know, property, uh, the application for the permit would, would stay with you. Mm -hmm. The applicant as presented um and then you know we want to make sure the same language we use with the last applicant that all of our applicants are in compliance with the 
any mm -hmm. anybody else that they have to be in compliance with. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, mm -hmm. and we're going to say um, or yeah, I'm good with all that. Anything else? Contact information. Yeah, contact information. Vegetation. That the vegetation should be maintained that's in place there. I'm not looking to do any, you know. I mean, there's some pretty good sized you, trees. You want to kind of, it sounds like there's a certain amount of screening that's already in place, and, and we want that to stay or or grow. <laughs> right. So we want that. We don't to, want it clear. Right. So we, we want it to be, I would, I think maintain and then you know if there's ever an issue then it's up to the building inspector to enforce it so obviously if a tree gets struck by lightning and they fall down and clean up it's maintained mm -hmm. you know yeah. and the applicant does what's reasonable to keep things from from the road i guess i'm just wondering if there's any bit of language to put in there to say with the intention of keeping it screen you know like like he understands that now we're, we're all talking about the same thing yeah but, you know I'm just curious if, the, if, it, if it's important enough to be that specific or if just what you're saying, maintain the vegetation, essentially to, gets the point across. I think so. So the applicant shall maintain the screening vegetation within the property. Yeah. 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 And I think obviously, you know, things change and there's more parcels there that get developed or people come for more permits on some of those other parcels there than that's close to the road, then we would maybe have an opportunity to say, all right, well, now I think you need to do some, you know, fencing or arborvitaes or, you know, some type of combination of screening. That would be down the road, but, you know, we obviously want to promote business. It is a commercial area of town. We want to, you know, it's the right place to have that type of stuff, but we also, you know, want to keep some of the aesthetics going through. Is, is there anything that we could say about the vegetation, like where it's located? Is, is this vegetation that's along River Road? It's not. It's not. It's, not. it's, it's kind of up on the hill. Um, but, you know, there's some, you know, and I'm not exactly, you have to quote the property map, but there's some old, old growth, you know, older growth trees that are established and stuff like that. And then there's some more of the garden variety brush around them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we want to make sure that the applicant can, you know, trim it and use it, but obviously keep some of that. You can see it, you know. The heavier, darker yeah. type of vegetation. Yeah. So. And don't forget, if that's the railroad, that's the railroad's railroad. going to come in and cut it down. No, no, the railroad's the, 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 the this is a tr uh, asphalt terminal, but if you're facing River Road, well, there's two lines that say River Road, but there's. Yeah, I think that's the. Is that an old one? Oh, River Road's at the top of the screen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's actually, the there's two. Red that goes the other red oh, is Pan Am Railways. Right. right. So there's, but isn't there a railroad across there? I'm just saying that because I live next, right next to the railroad across every year, the railroad company oh, right. doesn't clear it. So I just want to make sure if they go over where they, we might consider a boundary, that they're not sighted because they're, that's not. No, in no. Their there's control. no sight in the railroad. They do whatever they want. Yeah, they have their own. <laughs> there's another, there's another yeah, section the eight river. there that, that that Doug owns as well. Okay. Oh, all right. So that's separate. I'm sorry. It looked in the map, it looked it's like seven and eight there. were together. So my apologies. My concern was just kind of for those some of those older growth trees and some of that stuff that on, in the, front of the, on the north river. side there okay. of, of his spot. Yeah. That those should you know those should be cut down. Those would be kind of maintained, and that helps screen out. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah. cleared out that whole point, all of a sudden everything is wide open. Right. right. Exactly. And it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you can ask or recommend, you know, that certain things be done. Yeah. But or then again, but then again, you, when you're looking above the seven uh, to the right of those three vehicles in a row, you know, visually you can't tell how large of a opening that is to get trucks in and out so you've also got to make sure that you know he's got enough room to get the vehicles in. Uh, yeah no I, yeah i i agree i mean that's why i said maintain you know not 
it's not a do not cut order or cut and replace. It's a, you know, what, what's reasonable. All right, so now we can close the public hearing then. And again, yeah. no butters, nobody else. No one else, anybody else online before we close the public hearing? All right, I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. All those in favor? Dave Sharp, aye. Aye. Adam Sikowski, aye. Jennifer Remillard, aye. Alex Hirschenreiter, aye. I don't know what everybody else feels like, but um, I would be supportive of entering uh, the email that was sent reflecting the response to all of the criteria um, as the findings of fact. Uh, I'm in support of all those. Uh, section 5321 through 26. Yep. I would, uh, I would say that if you want to uh, add those in and make and entertain the motion to approve it with the conditions that we talked about in the public hearing. I'm fine with that. Unless any other board members have anything else to add or want to entertain anything, anybody else's thoughts? Nope, all Are you okay. making that motion? No, you can. Okay. Uh, all right. So I will uh, make a motion to approve this special permit for. Uh, Jeff Kroniski at map nine, lot six, with the following conditions and authorize the chair. Oh, sorry. That's so Doug Ryan. <laughs> All right. Uh, map nine, lot seven, uh, with the following conditions and authorize the chairman to sign. And those conditions are the special permit shall remain with the applicant. The applicant shall obtain all necessary. Can we talk about that? Yep. Uh, the applicant shall obtain all necessary permits, licenses, and other approval from any board, commission, official, or other agency or agent of the town of Deerfield, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, or the federal government. The applicant shall provide contact information to be on file with the town for emergency purposes. The applicant shall limit the number of vehicles to 15 on the property. And the applicant shall maintain the screening vegetation within the property boundary. Okay, all those in favor? All right. Dave Sharp, aye. Can we get a second? Second. Oops, sorry. Dave Sharp, aye. Jennifer Remillard, aye. Uh, Alex Hirschenreiter, aye. Okay, Adam Sikowski, aye. Oh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Okay, I appreciate it. Sorry about the. Uh, Just make sure delay. that uh, after you get the permit, uh, and we forgot to tell the other guy. Make sure you have it reported at the registry yes. of deeds. Yep. So it's on the, yep. it, it, sure. even though the permit, even though that the permit goes with you. So if you leave and there's another lessee, then that goes yep. away. Yep. But then that way it, it shows that on there okay. for the matter of record. Thank you very much. Thank All right. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other business? Next meeting. Alex, what's do you have any insight? We have any uh, anything pending here coming, um, in, coming in? No, not that I know of. Not that you know of. All right. All right. We look at November. That's the the first day before Governor's Day. Yeah, that's not going to work for me. Um, uh, that yeah, it's election week, and oh, let's... I know, I just. I guess just, that's we get all me. jammed up for me. Do you always do you post a meeting even if there's nothing going on just to have it on the books and then you cancel if nothing comes up or do we meet other way around? So we're we'll normally meet either quarterly, yeah, or we try the second Thursday if there's the second Thursday is like when we're in with like the Zoom yeah. and all that stuff yeah. is if there's an applicant. Okay. But we been a little bit flexible. We try for the second Thursday that has worked. I don't know. I yeah. mean, I'm always open to this is not a good night for me. 
type sure. response yeah. because we still have an open seat. We still need another member. Yeah. So we got to make sure that, you know, for the people that have the courage to volunteer that we're doing what we can to accommodate them. But we also, there's a certain amount of time we have to of lead time with the newspaper and all that yeah. posting requirements. Right. right. So. Well, good night, everybody. I'm, I'm getting out of here. All right. Good night, Bob. Thanks. Thank you. You're saying the 10th doesn't work for you? No, the 10th doesn't work for me. I'm going to, after I get out of work, I'm going to leave town. So it would be December 8th would be the December normal meeting night. Yeah. No, that might be Six thirty the normal time always. It's December eighth. Yeah, I, I drive six thirty so we can get out of here earlier. Yeah. Next. So we'll set that on the calendar. We'll set that on the calendar. If any applications come in, I'll I'll direct the administrative staff to schedule it for that night. Um, in the event, if nothing comes in, they'll just have to come out for another site. What time does Wayne up close? Anyone know? Uh, is it eight? Am I out of luck? You, you might. Well, uh, I'm really happy that I have a raincoat next door. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I have an at all. It's closing <laughs> soon, it says eight. Is it? Okay. All right. It's eight. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Dave Sharp, Dave Sharp. Dave Sharp, I. Adam Sikulowski. Jennifer Remillard, I. Alex Searcher at her eye. It was at 8 30, Dave. Oh, it is 8 30? Yeah, it's at 8 30.